Mary Meeker, who is going to give us an update on all things uh, tech and internet, as well as you told me you're going to do a little bit of, little bit of the economy. A little bit on the economy. A little bit. Okay. Thanks. Take it away. Thanks, John. And as is usually the case, I asked John for a little more time. He said no. Then I told him I said more time. And then I found out I didn't have the extra time. So the good news is, if I don't get through this, the slides are at morganstanley.com slash tech research. But what I wanted to do is talk about three things. One, the economy, um, give you some backdrop on why we're in the state that we're in. Two, talk about technology and advertising spending and look, at back, look back at where we've been and see if there's some analogs. Uh, to talk about trends in technology and the internet, digital consumer, mobile, and emerging markets. And then um, close up. The economy has been, this, this recession has been a long time in coming. Um, the real question is how long will it last? Will it last one year or five years? And I'm going to give you a lot of data and you can draw your own conclusions from your businesses. Um, the root of the problem is we've had uh, about 10, 15 years ago, there was a mandate to increase home ownership in the United States. And after 30 years of home ownership, at, riding at about a 64% level, it shot up to 69% in a 10-year period. That's what the red line represents. The yellow line represents interest rates, which went down a lot, making credit a lot easier to obtain. And this line is the U.S. savings rate, uh, which actually went negative in 2005. So um, mandate to buy more homes and making it very easy. Home prices went up tenfold or twofold in the last 10 years after inflation adjusted not doing much for 30 years. Uh, so not only were you incented to uh, buy homes with easy credit, you were incented to buy homes because they were going up in value. Uh, next point um, looks at foreign ownership of U.S. Treasuries. It's at 60 percent, uh, last available data, um, up from what was about uh, 20 percent back in the early 80s, uh, up twofold uh, as a percent of GDP. The national debt is now three times um, GDP levels. So we had a lot of money that came in from other countries because the United States was a safe place to put assets um, and we certainly took advantage of it, as did other countries. Um, this looks at GDP growth and consumer spending in the United States. In the third quarter this year, it was down 3 percent sequentially. Um, that's the biggest sequential decline in consumer spending since 1980. Um, and the bad news is it appears that October spending was worse than September and September was worse than July, uh, excuse me, was also worse than August and August was worse than, worse than July. Try doing the, uh, uh, the months backwards fast. Um, GDP forecasts have been, have had a downward bias. Um, the slide is an eyesore, I apologize for that, but it looks at GDP growth rates for the major economies around the world. Uh, the forecast for most economists is for negative, slightly negative growth in 08 and also 09. This looks at the stock market. Um, the stock market is oftentimes a great leading indicator of what's to come, a uh, far better indicator than a lagging indicator, which is what the econ when economists try to measure a recession, when they say we're in a recession, it's usually been predicted by um, the stock markets. Um, the, the red line represents the Chinese market, which peaked in 2007. It's down 71 percent from uh, from its 12-month peak, Russia down 67 percent, Japan down 50 percent, oil down 53 percent, and the S&P outperforming the global markets down only 36 percent. Um, so as you're looking at what's to come in the future, watch the market after three to six months of a trading pattern. It will usually give you a sense of, of what may happen next. So the market will lead um, a recovery, not lag a recovery. This looks at the performance of the uh, sectors within the S&P 500. Um, gives you a sense of who's been hurt most. Again, also a leading indicator, financials, consumer discretionary, telecom services, um, et cetera, that make up that decline in the S&P. What does it mean for technology? What does it mean for ad spending? Uh, the reality is technology spending and advertising spending are closely tied to uh, GDP growth. I'm going to go through some um, a regression analysis there, which will be very, which will be very scintillating and um, then go back and look at what happened in 2000 and 2000, 2003. Retail sales have been slowing. The yellow line represents um, e-commerce. The red line represents total retail sales. This is data going back to 2001. So the rate of growth has been slowing. 
Same thing for advertising. The green line represents internet advertising. The red dotted line represents overall uh, U.S. advertising, so all components of advertising. Advertising spending and GDP growth are very highly correlated, an 81 percent correlation. Um, if you do a simple regression analysis, uh, it would imply that if GDP growth grows at zero percent, uh, which is close to being in line with the forecast, ad spending would decline by four percent. We've done a GDP up five percent, ad uh, GDP down five percent to give you different uh, different levels of spend. Obviously, this will be on the internet again, morganstanley.com slash tech research if you want to read that. We don't have great fact patterns on how the internet uh, will do with a, a regression analysis simply because of the anomaly of spending in the early, the early 2000s. Our bet um, is that display advertising is continues to be challenged, uh, but search will do better, but will still be, um, still be challenged as well. This looks at online ad spending uh, back in 2000. It looks at from 1996 to the present. We had a 27 percent decline from 2000 to 2002. Uh, we don't think we're in for that kind of a decline in large part because what the overall economy is going through right now, easy credit, lots of spending, um, is what the internet specifically went through back in 1999 or 2000. That was not a 10-year spend. It was probably a five-year spend. But what one of the things that we focus on in, the, in, on, on in the analyst community is looking at trend lines. What you'll see back in 2000 and 2001 is ad spending for the Internet was very much above trend line. The good news is we're not above trend line now. Uh, but the patterns of the deceleration on a quarterly basis are somewhat similar to what they were uh, back in late 00, but we don't think we'll have the sort of severe decline we had back then at all. If we look at tech spending back in 0001, again, this looks at 1995 to 2008. Um, we had two years of negative to flat growth. We were down 1% in 2001, and this is global technology spending uh, for publicly traded companies. Flat in 2002, up 13% in 2003. One thinks about that, that doesn't seem so bad. Um, it's compared with about a 10 percent average rate of growth, but this looks at the quarterly data. What it, what, what it represented was five quarters of negative sequential growth, then five quarters of flat to modest growth, and then, a, um, uh, and then we had the recovery. If we compare what we lived through when we troughed, I think in 01, in the second half of 01, with where we are right now, the forecast for the third and fourth quarter imply a faster uh, deceleration. What took three quarters then, it will take two quarters now. So that's somewhat unnerving. Um, and the real question that we're trying to figure out is this one year or five years. Um, and the good news is that um, there are a lot of positive underlying trends, we think, for growth. We lived through this in 00, 01, and 02, where it felt like the, the technology world had ended. And the reality is eyeballs continue to grow, innovation continue to occur, uh, and revenue um, revenue followed that. On the digital consumer side, um, the good news, bad news is there's a huge amount of growth in social networking, online video, voice over IP. Uh, the bad news is they carry much lower CPMs. If I was an advertiser, I would be focused on uh, innovating in uh, the low CPM categories to take advantage of what is a huge arbitrage opportunity. This is stuff you know, but it's interesting to see it illustrated. It's unfortunate that you can't understand the slide, but what it says is YouTube and Facebook gained 500 basis points of relative share in the last two years, while Yahoo and MSN lost relative share. Um, these are four websites that we're very excited about. Um, I am actually going to slow down, John, wherever you are. I'm running. I've have, I'm going to run out of have too much time here. But um, number one is YouTube, 52 percent year-to-year growth. 329 million unique visitors. Facebook, 161 million visitors, up 119% year to year. Skype, 370 million users, up 51% year to year. PayPal, 19% growth. If we drill down on this per Comscore data, YouTube just became the number two global search engine in the world, followed by its parent, or following its parent, Google. Um, Facebook has 120 million active visitors in the last month. Um, the, the, the user data is, is, I think, quarterly data. For Skype, and I think this is a very big deal, if Skype were a carrier, if you looked at the ranking of all the wired and wire wireless carriers in the world, it would be the number one 
carrier if you compared their registered users with the carrier subscriber numbers. That's a big apple and a little orange. Uh, but nonetheless, we believe it will surpass, its registered users will surpass China Mobile's registered users in the next couple of quarters. And they're seeing an acceleration in their usage growth in large part because people are looking for ways to cut their phone bills and the quality of service continues to improve. If you look at the PayPal off eBay payment volume, it was up 49% year to year. If you look at the eyeballs and the aggregate advertising um, opportunity here, or opportunity is big, the actual monetization is low. Um, our bet is that what we see in the next couple of years in a tough time is some smart advertisers taking advantage of what are relatively low CPMs on those properties. Um, ad supply is far greater than demand. It's one of the reasons we're having CP de CPM degradation. Uh, next point on mobile, the innovation is unlike anything we've seen. Um, we believe this is the single area where the most amount of wealth will be created and also destroyed uh, because of the impact of it over the course of the next five years. And by that we mean the winners will gain and the losers will lose share and lose, we think, big time. Um, these, this is an example of some of the game changer products that all have extraordinary ease of use. You know them well, you probably own most of them. A Wii, the Xbox 360, the Kindle, uh, the Apple iPhone 3G, the 3 Skype phone, which is a great voice over IP and soon to be social networking phone, um, and, and, and personal navigation devices. One of the things that doesn't get a lot of play that we think is important, um, when we looked at how broadband replaced dial-up, and dial-up was created back in the 19, early 1990s. The adoption of cellular modems as a way to access the internet anywhere, anytime is growing very, very rapidly. Uh, unfortunately, not rapidly enough for us to be able to gather good data on it. Um, but one of the things that we try to do is look at all the markets around the world to figure out what's happening in one market to see if it'll apply to another market. And we were certainly intrigued when uh, we found out that 64%, this is a very important data point that will be very exciting for you to know at cocktail parties and other things, but 64% of new Austrian broadband subscribers use cellular modems. Um, this may be the first time in history that Austria is a leading indicator of where the rest of the world is going. Um, but it does, and if you're Austrian, I apologize. I've been there, I love it. Um, if I lived there, I wouldn't use the internet at all. I'd do other things. but. Um, the point of that is it's people want wireless access anywhere, anytime. And I'll go through some um, data on emerging markets that I think will surprise you in a minute. This looks at Opera's um, the growth for um, its, its mobile internet browser growing very, very rapidly. Um, one of the things that we try to do is we try to look for inflection points in the industry um, to figure out what it means. And when Google launched the G1 phone with T-Mobile and HTC, Within a week and a half, Motorola announced they were going to, ha um, to create a 350-person Android, Google Android development team. Nokia's chief technology officer resigned, and Apple announced that it's, um, you didn't have to sign an NDA for its SDK. Um, that also sounds like a rap song, but I'm not going to do that again. But point of that is, in my career, I have never seen so such big uh, tectonic changes, if you will, after the announcement of a product, and we think it speaks to um, exactly what the stakes are in this in this arena. Um, Symbian, uh, the Symbian smartphone operating system, dominates the global market for operating systems. The, the rainbow-colored chart in here is North America, which indicates there are a lot of different operating systems in North America. Our bet with the innovation coming out of Apple. Uh, with the iPhone and um, Google with Android and Microsoft with Windows Mobile and other things is while the U.S. has been a huge laggard in um, the mobile internet market as it's developed in places like Japan and China and Europe over the last 10 years, we think we'll end up being a, a leader uh, in the marketplace in the next five to 10 years. 3G will probably be at 22% of subscribers by 2010. That means there'll be enough people on a fast network uh, to make mobile internet more interesting. Um, this is just revenue data. Asia and Europe lead in mobile data revenue. I think the U.S. will catch up over time. In Japan, almost as many people access the internet on their mobile phones as do in the U.S. Very different for um, uh, in the U.S. market. I'm going to skip through a few of these slides just to get to the closing points. Um, the emerging markets are where there is a huge amount of growth on the internet. Unfortunately, um, a lot of companies aren't big players in those marketplaces. 
The top 10 emerging markets will surpass the top 10 developed markets in 2008. Um, if we look at where we're seeing the most number of internet users added on an, an annual basis, number one is China with 73 million internet users added. That's more homes, that's almost as many homes as there are in the United States. The United States added about 10 million. Brazil, Pakistan, Colombia, and India, and Iran all added 5 million or more and were the fastest net ad markets. If we look at the mobile market, similar names but much different numbers. China, 86 million mobile subscribers added in 2007. India, 67. Pakistan, 44. Brazil, 21. Russia, 19. Indonesia, 18. The United States, 14. So for better or for worse, this is really where a lot of the growth is. The closing thoughts, having lived through a downturn, downturn before, is that companies with cogent business models that can provide consumer value will survive and thrive. Consumers need value more than ever. We're of the view that at the margin, in a difficult environment, because people can search for things and find them at better values on the internet, there'll be certainly be companies that benefit from that. That's what we would be focused on. The good news is uh, retail penetration uh, is still very low on the internet, only 6%. A lot of markets at much higher penetration. We think that's the opportunity. Amazon has done a great job with its best-in-class its best user experience and its recommendation engine of driving very strong growth and gaining share. We think that'll continue. In the ad market, there's still a lot of ad share to gain, about $300 per household spent in online advertising in the U.S. Uh, compared with newspapers still at 800, lots of share to gain. Search should, should continue to become more important. Um, CPMs, while they may be under near-term pressure because of the targetability and what we think is effectiveness and ROI, should have long-term upside. And the last news, and John, you'll be glad to know I'm done, one minute over. Um, but one of the things that we did back in the, in the early to mid to late 1990s is we did a forecast of how um, many internet users we thought there would be and what the average advertising revenue per user would be. It ended up actually being pretty close to being accurate, though it went above the trend line and then, and then went a little below. But it's interesting, it wasn't that long ago that we had I think 18 million internet users in 1995, 55 million in um, online advertising revenue, um, and we now have 1.35 billion users and $30 per in revenue per user and 41 billion in revenue. So in spite of living through a very difficult time in 2000, 2001, uh, it's worked out okay. Uh, and if anything, uh, there's more opportunity to monetize um, advertise, monetize the internet more effectively, I think, on a go-forward basis, given the, the trends with mobile um, and innovation in advertising. But it's going to take a little bit of time. So with that, I am, I am required to go to disclosure statements, as you know. And um, <laughs> you can find the disclosure statements at morganstanley.com slash techresearch. But hope that was helpful. And John, you're back on.